Hey everybody, Hoosier Jedi here again with another review for you. This time I'm talking the Riverdale episodes of the Noose Titans and A Night to Remember. <clears throat> so, uh, sorry about the uh, little delay in the schedule here. Um, just uh, was working on an online college class and uh, things kind of uh, got, uh, the schedule got a little bit messed up, but uh, everything did work out in the end. I even ended up getting an A on that class, so uh, pretty happy about that. Uh, anyway, so let's get into these episodes here. So let's um, let's start. So <clears throat> I really like what they did with uh, Cheryl in uh, these episodes. I mean, when we first pick up with her, she's stuck in this uh, basically brainwashing camp. Uh, which is really messed up, and um, it is great to see the uh, the team ride to her rescue. Um, but I did, I really did like how, especially in these episodes with Cheryl, there's a really great back and forth uh, between, you know, Cheryl being at a low and then Cheryl being at a high. Um, and I do like um, <clears throat> that in the News Titans they uh, have Penelope like flat out say like, yeah, Cheryl was the one that was more or less stalking Josie and sent uh, sent her a pig's heart and stuff. And Josie uh, understandably freaks out and basically says, like, okay, that's it. I'm through trying to help Cheryl. I mean, I can't help somebody who did this to me. Which is great. That's a perfectly reasonable reaction. But in the next episode, it basically just takes Cheryl apologizing and a little conversation, and she's forgiven for that. Meanwhile, Chuck, who did also did really, really crappy stuff to other people, uh, he's kind of been in the doghouse at Riverdale High for quite a while, and okay, deservedly so, but he has for a while been genuinely making what seems to be a sincere effort to turn himself around and show it's like, hey, okay, I learned my lesson, I'm not like that anymore. And <clears throat> I do like that um, the latter episode, the, uh, the rest of the gang basically says like, okay, we believe that you really are sorry for what you did and that you have made a genuine effort to, to try and, uh, you know, be a better person. We see that. So, you know what, from now on, you're cool with us, which, okay, good. You know, a lot of people were upset that Chuck uh, was portrayed that way because in the comics he's shown to generally be a really, really nice guy. But um, I do kind of like what Riverdale did there. It's like, he didn't start out as a nice person. He had to have something in his life change that made him decide to become a good and better person. That's kind of, you know, that's called character character development. Um, let's see here. Oh, I blanked there for a minute. Um, so apparently, uh, by the end of the previous, uh, by the end of uh, them breaking out Cheryl out of the, uh, that uh, loony bin there, uh, she and uh, Tony are apparently to some degree a little bit of a couple. Um, we're sort of left a little bit ambiguous as to where things are on that front in uh, the the school play episode, but yeah, you know, just there are, there are little moments like particularly when Cheryl and Tony have that little private conversation. Um, to the show that, yeah, it may be not be full on, but that there is definitely something very important and very, you know, genuinely emotional, emotionally connecting going on there. And I guess it's the best, well, not the best way to put it, but um, how I can put it at this particular moment. <clears throat> um, Man, some creepy stuff going on with Chick here, um, like in the, the News Titans, where Chick, despite uh, seeming and really being presented as somebody who's very good at uh, manipulating and, uh, you know, play and using people, apparently blows this whole, like, find out what Nadine knows about uh, the whole situation so incredibly spectacularly that it's almost unbelievable. And I do like how um, that whole situation does get resolved with, you know, Betty getting the serpents to help. But what I thought was the really nice tip is that they still gave Nadine and that uh, big dude the money. And that's, that's honestly, under the circumstances, the right move. Simply because 
if they said, okay, yeah, get the hell out of here and we're keeping the 10,000 bucks, those two would have had absolutely nothing to lose by coming back and looking for some payback when the serpents weren't around. But by giving them the money, okay, they get to walk away with something and it gives them very little reason to come back looking for more because it's like, hey, if we come back, we're going to have to deal with this situation. We're, there's, there are some guys, there's more than one, we, we would be in for some payback on our own. Here they, they can walk away with something and sort of like, okay, we got something out of that. Let's just move on with our lives. But uh, if they walked away with nothing, then really what did they have by to lose by not going to the sheriff or by just coming back and looking for some payback at some point? Although I did like that it was pointed out, it's like basically it's like, yeah, the Coopers are a really respected family in Riverdale. If you go to the sheriff with that, who the hell do you think Sheriff Keller is going to believe, me or you? And like Nadine and this thuggish guy are obviously people who have probably had some less than positive encounters with the law before. <clears throat> so, yeah, and um, kind of a little surprised that they didn't try and play that angle harder because, well, who's got the credibility here? I mean, you really think Chick can't come up with some reasonably plausible lie if he has a little time to think about it as to why he was asking about this? And then there's the whole situation with him popping up at the school play. And I love how people quite quickly notice it's like when they find Midge's body, Chick is just like the one guy who's just sitting there in the audience like nothing at all is going on wrong, which is super, super creepy. <laughs> And um, that was a shocker. I mean, I, I was uh, watching this episode. I was like, I was like, oh my god, because I you just didn't see that coming. I mean, Midge is also a longtime supporting character in the comics, so not really somebody I expected them to kill off. Then again, they they killed off phony Miss Grundy, so sure, what the heck, right? Um, I do also like that if you if you're paying close attention. You notice that Ethel says, I don't, these things weren't for those notes that got sent threatening about, the threatening notes that were sent about Cheryl being in the lead. And yet, only if I remember right, like, Kevin, Jughead, and Betty knew about that. So how did Ethel know about that? Yeah, so that sort of seems like, no, that um, Ethel is lying there. Um, also, just one thing I want to know is like, is it almost kind of weird that Fangs was in there just chatting with, uh, with Midge right before she died, and then he gives this really weird excuse as to why he was in there? I mean, I don't really, we, we really don't have a very good read on Fangs as a character, so it, it's kind of hard to say, but this is like, there's got to be something more going on there. Like, well, if there wasn't a reason for that, why would they even show us that? Um, let's see. Um, and then, of course, there's the whole, it's like, oh, the Black Hood is back. Well, we all knew this was going to happen, but, oh, man, was this a spectacular return. And him spelling out quite clearly, it's like, I'm going to go and I'm going to get the people who slipped through my fingers before. And if you think about it, that also probably puts Ethel and possibly, quite likely, uh, Kevin in his crosshairs as well. And, oh boy, that's not good. Um, let's see. So the whole thing with um, the mayoral race, um, still not super, really super pumped about that. But I really liked what, how they handled that in... Uh, a night to remember. You know, Hiram really more or less just for shits and giggles causes problems between Archie and his dad. I mean, granted his whole reasoning is like, oh, Fred's the um, the family values guy, but his family's a little bit uh, strained right now. But it's like, okay, he's having some, you know, disagreements with his son. Like, yeah, I mean, that just, uh, that just doesn't really seem like a thing that would really be a lot of hay that he could really work against Fred there. Especially, you know, considering that his wife is, you know, married to a guy who spent last season in jail. Um, and, you know, 
is a member of, is in fact, a organized crime leader. I mean, yeah, Hiram wiggled out of that, but still, you know, your husband's been so, uh, you know, Miss Lodge, your husband's been most of last year in jail, and yet you're criticizing Fred's morals? And I do like that Archie went to Hiram and said, like, look, don't try and come between me and my dad. That's not a fight you're going to win. And, you know, that's right. I mean, Archie, I like that Archie is really kind of showing that, like, yeah, I'm loyal to you, but even that has limits. And, you know, I think that this is actually something that Hiram would respect. I mean, do you really think there's any oath anybody could make him swear under any circumstances that would make him do something that would harm or come between uh, him and his relationship with Veronica? No. So points, points to Archie for that. And I also really like that uh, the whole thing with him and Fred led to uh, Archie going out and getting uh, the infamous jalopy from the comics. Um, that's that's such a nice classic Archie touch right there. That's great. And um, also, I really liked the, uh, in general. I really liked the musical episode. I mean, it's uh, there's so like so much cool stuff going on. Uh, you know, Betty and Veronica have uh, <laughs> another really nice. Uh, you know, Betty lit latching onto Veronica. Uh, <clears throat> but I do like how Archie um, kind of kind of talks to Betty some sense to Betty and's like, look, you really don't know what's going on with Veronica. You know, cut her a break, which is something that did need to be said. And in general, um, I, I really like the musical aspects of, uh, of this episode. I mean, musicals are really, really fun. Um, I'm not really familiar in any with, of, with Carrie the musical. I heard that such a thing exists, but I've never seen it. I oh, I can't even remember the last time I watched a musical. I think it was yeah, it was like some musical episode of a TV show or something. I, I can't remember. Uh, I like musicals, but they're not really something I actively seek out to watch. But yeah, man, I mean, uh, like the singing and the dancing, I mean, this was just so well done. It was really, really great. Um, just so much fun. And then it just, everything gets turned on its head. It's beautiful. I, I, I love it. This is, this is one of the reasons why I like this show so much. Um, nothing really particular to say about the whole thing with Alice and FP and what's uh, going on there. Although I did like how Alice really got to see a lot of herself in the role of Carrie's mom, and uh, how that sort of let her say, basically say, like, look, Betty, I know I've screwed up a lot as your mom, but I don't want our relationship to go down the toilet. Um, so yeah, lots of good stuff in these episode gu episodes, guys. I'm so, so digging this show. I cannot wait to see what happens next. Uh, until next time, then, take care and have a good one. Thank you.